Good morning, everybody, and welcome to yet another feature of Z Learning right here at Riverbanks Zoo and Garden. My name is Milo, and today we are here inside of our animal hospital behind the scenes. Now, you Z Learning regulars know that this is our second hospital feature. We were here weeks ago with a goat visitor. Today, we are in a totally different direction, but I do need to say a shout out to Alexis and William, who just tuned in. Good morning. I just went ahead and reversed the mask this morning. I'm loving the zebra print. Good morning, Ven and Elsie. Nice to see you. Pam, thanks for tuning in live, everybody. And good morning, Faith, of course. Nice to see all their familiar faces. So today we have a very interesting live procedure that we are already kind of going on just in the room next to me. But I wanted to kind of give you a heads up of what we're going to see. We are doing a regular exam on a new two-toed sloth. Her name is Willow. Like I said yesterday in our post, it's not Coco Joe. It's not the sloth we met a couple weeks ago. Instead, this is a new animal resident that has recently moved here to Riverbanks and has yet to meet Coco Joe. But here in a second, we're actually going to head into the x-ray room where the procedure is actually going on. We're gonna get introduced to some of our familiar faces. Last time we were here in the hospital, we were talking with Martha, which is our director of animal health. And she's going to be joining us here in the area too. But right now, we have a few different staff members that are already kind of going through this big exam out on our table. So let me go ahead and turn around the camera and let y'all see the action. All right, so in there, you can maybe see Willow a little bit, but I wanna say good morning, Adam, Dr. Michael, and Reese. We have our whole crew from our hospital. They are in here. This is a real procedure that's going on. And I have to introduce, of course, Willow, who's on the table this morning. <laughs> now, Willow is about a year and a half old. If you can't tell from looking at her, she is a two-toed sloth. But you can see that she is anesthetized right now, so she is sleeping during this exam, so that way she's nice and comfortable. But we're gonna just kind of be filming in and around. We're checking out her mouth, eyes, body, Take a peek at her. I know all of you that are tuning in right now, this is a whole lot to take in. So let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Like I mentioned, Willow is sleeping right now. So that way she is having a stress-free experience. But the exam that we're doing here this morning actually is particularly for the fact that she is a new individual. So it's kind of in the name of social distancing, you could say. She's going through a standard quarantine period, which are 30 days for new mammals arriving at Riverbanks. So she has yet to head out into the zoo. She's been here in the hospital. But of course, this exam is to make sure that she is in good health, that she's not bringing any weird cooties to the rest of our zoo residents, especially, most importantly, to Coco Joe, who she eventually will meet and hopefully live with. In fact, Willow arrived here specifically on a breeding recommendation but right now that is far from our radar because their priority right now, the team that you're watching this morning are making sure that her body is doing what it needs to. We'll actually be doing x-rays this morning and ultrasound as well. But those of you who are checking out those big long claws, that is absolutely how they get the name, Two-Toed Sloth. Now behind me, I'm actually joined by Martha, our Director of Animal Health here at Riverbanks. Now, Martha, can you tell us a little bit more as I watch my step here about what we are looking at? Kind of what is Dr. Michael doing right now? We're trying to do a thorough head to toe physical exam, make sure that she doesn't have any skin problems. Sometimes in sloths, you'll see they get dry skin or cracked sure. skin on their little hands. Yep. We also wanna take a good look at her teeth um, and one of the things that I find really funny is that sloths used to be classified as edentates, which means no, no teeth. <laughs> um, and if Dr. Michael actually pull her lips back, you can see that she's actually got some really good teeth in there. Whoa, holy smokes. She really does. Those look like <laughs> sharp. Are those canines? They are canineiform. Canineiform. Wow, Martha, you are schooling us this morning. <laughs> look at all these big words. I'm so impressed. Okay, so canineiform. What's the difference in between that and a canine? It means means they're shaped like a canine tooth, but aren't actually derived from the same tooth gotcha. that we would call a canine. Sure, sure, sure. So it's 
If there's any dentists tuning in, you know the difference. Martha's speaking on your level this morning. Let's go ahead and zoom back a little bit. What are we doing now, though? So they're getting ready to put her, they've got her on the x-ray plate. Um, and this is a digital x-ray, so sure. the signal will transfer directly to the computers and we'll get that x-ray up right away for you to take a look at. So we're doing a side read right now yep. and it looks like Reese and Adam are kind of propping her up. Yep. If you notice the bean bags, I'm guessing those are just to kind of hold her body in place? Help position her, yep. Got it, so okay, that we'll, makes sense. We'll take two views, one with her lying on her side okay. and then one with her lying on her back. And we're not, because she's so young, we're not yep. really expecting to find anything sure. abnormal, but this gives us a baseline so that we know at this time in her life when she was healthy, this is what she looked like. And gotcha. if she develops problems down the road, we have this to compare to. Well, that's a really good point that you bring up is kind of all the record keeping that we do here at Riverbanks and accredited zoos all around the country too, that all of this then goes into a database so that way Worst case scenario, down the road, if Willow does get ill or is starting to have different conditions that are starting to show up, we have a paper trail and can mark today, gosh, what is today? The 3rd of June <laughs> as being able to collect all this information about her health. So not only is this really important for her to leave quarantine, to head out into the rest of the zoo, but it's also important as far as our records are concerned. Yep. Now I will give you all a heads up too who are tuning in live. Here in a second, we're actually gonna have to leave the room because we don't wanna be here during the x-ray. We don't wanna get any radiation. So we'll actually step out with the rest of the staff members. So you might see a, a wave of movement. It'll be just real fast and quick and then we'll head back in. But right now they're still kind of propping her different body parts, positioning them so that way those limbs and bones, I'm assuming, aren't stacked and in, in the way of each other. Yep, and sloths are actually, they're, they're a very funny shape, which makes <laughs> putting them on their sides very sure. difficult. That's a hard position. She'll lie on her back much more easily. Fascinating. All right, okay. are you ready? Yeah, let's step out. Let's go for it. Let me go ahead and turn around this camera as we are heading on out back over into another one of our wings. And we're actually going to shut the doors behind me here real quick. All of you who are tuning in, Audrey, I just saw your question about, is the goal for Coco, Joe, and Willow to hit it off and breed? You got it, that's the exact reason. It was actually part of our species survival plan for a sustainable two-toed sloth population. That was fast. Okay, so now what they're going to be doing here, if we kind of pivot around, they still have another x-ray to take, so we're not gonna go too far, but let me go ahead and turn around the camera so you can see the commotion. Because like Martha mentioned, we did a side view, and then here in a second, we're actually going to do a back view, I'm assuming? Uh, she'll lie on her back. On her back, okay, perfect. So her belly will be up then. Y'all go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. We'll actually peek over here. Martha quickly mentioned that screen. So here's a quick picture of kind of that x-ray. It's amazing that we have this digital system so that way we can get these answers real nice and fast. Much easier to store than the big printed versions. But right now they are repositioning her so that way she's getting all ready. So you might notice they're using tape, the bean bags, all different ways to kind of stretch out her body so that way they can get the full view, all while still making sure that she has oxygen and breathing properly. Right, I'm gonna ask her to step out real quick for me. Perfect. All right, let's turn around the camera one more time. We're stepping on out. A lot of movement today, y'all. You are here for the real experience at Riverbanks. So Willow is about a year and a half old, so she's a pretty young individual, and she moved to us from another accredited zoos. Oh, but Samantha, that's a really unique question. I'm glad that you asked it. Are sloths marsupials like kangaroos or koalas? Surprisingly enough, they're not. I know they look a lot like a koala and have a similar lifestyle. Sloths are actually kind of their own family. They're more closely related to anteaters and armadillos. They're very, very unique animals. In fact, Two-toed sloths out in the wild would be found in Central and South America. But let's go ahead. I'm going to start to scroll through some of these questions while they're repositioning Willow. Oh, I'm loving all the different shout-outs for sloths. You all love sloths. They are so much fun. Everyone's so curious. Oh, Molly, age 11, you were wondering how often does Willow go to the vet? This is actually her first time meeting with the vet staff for a procedure here at Riverbanks. She's been hanging out here in our quarantine facility for a couple of weeks now, and she'll finish out her quarantine and then eventually move to our sloth habitat and be introduced to Coco Joe. But of course, we're gonna take that at sloth speed. So she gets to call the shots on that, of course. 
Alexis and William, you are absolutely right. In fact, right before we went live, they got blood work. They'll test the blood work. They actually went ahead and gave her a microchip as well. And not only a microchip, but they're actually going to vaccinate her too. So we're going to go ahead and head back on in. They vaccinated her for rabies, those of you who are wondering, since she is a mammal. Let's go ahead and turn around this camera yet again. Okay, so now we're all set up. We're set up for, look at this belly view. <laughs> Perfect. All right, everybody. So we're going to sneak out one more time, but you can see that big tummy view. She's a little fat. <laughs> She's perfect. Hopefully she doesn't take that personally. <laughs> but of course, regular weights are all a part of that too. So Alexis and William, you're right. There's so much more steps than just kind of doing a once over on her body. It's all about blood work, vaccines, microchipping, so we can identify her. Just like you might microchip your dogs and cats at home, we do the same for our animal residents here. Oh, Anna, if you didn't catch that comment, she is a year and a half old. So she is a pretty young individual, has a little bit more growing to do, but she is not considered a baby sloth anymore. She is a grown adult, you could say. All right, everybody. So we're gonna keep sticking around in here. They're taking another quick x-ray. So we're gonna stay safe out over here on this side. Keep your questions rolling on in. It is so great to see all of you tuning in live for our second hospital feature. Oh, Joyce, that was a great question because we were just joking about her weight. I actually don't have a clue how much she weighs, so maybe one of our other staff members can chime in. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so haven't taken the weight yet, so Joyce, stay tuned. I'm on the edge of my seat as well. Oh, yeah, we can take her and get away right now. Why not? We'll answer Joyce's question. Perfect. Okay, so Joyce, stick around. We're actually going to move her right now. Reese is picking her up very gently. We're going to kind of follow her over. She is actually taking her into another room and she's going to weigh her really quickly and report back to us and maybe we'll have to do some mental math to convert it to where... 9.35 So in kg, she's 9.35. How many... Kilograms, sorry. Oh gosh, that's really different. You're right. <laughs> Thanks for correcting me. So about how many pounds would you say she is? She's about 20 pounds then, Joyce. Thanks for asking because it was on our radar anyway. I'm glad that you <laughs> asked that question. Now, as you all know, sloths spend a whole lot of their time sleeping, but this is a normal thing for her. She's doing a great job. We're keeping an eye on all of her different reads to make sure that she's still healthy, sleeping well, breathing well. And right now, our hospital staff actually just pulled up a rolly cart, which also kind of goes back to what Martha talked about weeks ago when we were talking about how portable all of our equipment is here in the animal hospital. It has to be mobile because not all of our animals like Willow can actually come here to the hospital. So having that ultrasound equipment on wheels and ready to roll wherever is very, very important. But now we're going to do a quick ultrasound of that tummy of hers since she's per laid down perfectly. And we actually might kind of spin around and get a different perspective here in a second. Let me go ahead and scroll through though as you all see all this action happening. See if I can find any other questions y'all are sending in. Ultrasound, Amanda, you're correct. No, now I will say though, we're not looking for a baby. She's not pregnant. I know a lot of times when you hear the word ultrasound, that's the first thing y'all think of, but ultrasounds are a great way for us to check out those internal organs as well. Let's go ahead. We're gonna kind of get a different angle. We're gonna go ahead, kind of peek on over here. Dr. Michael's over here. Oof. <laughs> so you can see that we're checking out the screen right here. <laughs> so you see this big old dark structure right here? I sure do. That is her bladder right now. And you <laughs> notice it's real big. It is, yeah. So, Why do sloths have such a big bladder? So sloths actually only urinate about once a week. So they'll store up urine for a full week. <laughs> so they got to have a real big bladder. And part of that is because they want to stay in the trees as much as they can. So Such they don't have to point. come to the ground quite so often. So that's an adaptation to help with that. What an amazing adaptation. So those of you who tuned in when we were feeding breakfast to Coco Joe, you remember I made a big deal about the fact that he pooped the night before? Same kind of thing. Once a week for using the bathroom, whether it's number one or number two. She has a very large bladder right now. <laughs> so it's still right there. Her bladder is actually going to obscure some of the other organs because it's just so big right now. It's taking up a whole lot of space in there, it's it sounds like. It's taking up a lot of her abdomen right now. <laughs> so, let's see. 
Oh, Megan was wondering how long before the anesthesia is going to wear off for the procedure. So with what we use for her today, she actually will wake up in about five or ten minutes. So they wake up pretty quick from it once we wow. take her off it. So, so beginning to end, we're looking at less than a half an hour for the whole procedure. Yeah. So Milo, do you want to come around over here? Sure, absolutely. Here? Let's get another quick look. So if you look right here, you'll see that being with me. That's actually her heart. Is it really? Yep. So that's her heart beating right there. So you'll see the two portions of her heart right here and right here. Those are two different ventricles in her heart. Oh, cool. Okay. So now compared to other mammals, do they have a regular heartbeat so, or is it a little slower? It's actually about the same. Is it's it? Very, okay. It's very subjective. So it's a little faster than what a human would be considered normal. Okay. But for an animal her size, it's about the same as what it would be. So sure. typically smaller animals have faster heartbeats. And bigger animals have slower heartbeats. It's just gotcha. Thumb. Well, I just had to beat everyone who's tuning in live because when you think of sloths, you think a little slower. Yeah. But that is so neat to see that ultrasound live. So let's yeah. go ahead and take a look past the screen and kind of take a look at what's going on over here on this end. So you can see the piece of equipment's kind of reading through all of that fur. Thankfully, we didn't have to shave down and get a better view at all. You can see that beautiful textured coat that she has. We talked about that with Coco Joe last time too. All right. One more view with this and then we'll probably be ready to just about wrap up. Absolutely. Well, and Danica, you were asking a great question. Is she going to be kind of groggy or dizzy after this? I'm going to say yes. Waking up from anesthesia for any animal. It's going to be a slow process, but thankfully she'll be moved right back into where she's been comfortable since moving here to Riverbanks. And then Reese, one of our hospital keepers, actually will be keeping a close eye on her then for the rest of the day and make sure that she eventually starts eating later in the day and going about her normal routine. Great questions, everybody. Keep them all coming. Oh, Ven was wondering about how size, what would you say is the size of a, a sloth heart if you had to compare it to an everyday eye object? Egg-ish, maybe a little bigger than your normal Sure. Today. You couldn't see. <laughs> the vet staff were putting their hands out trying to see, well, how big would you actually say? If you have a chicken egg at home, it's about the same size. Obviously very, very different. Um, a quick shout out though to Amanda. Thank you so much for donating to Riverbanks. That means the world to us. But we're actually gonna let our veterinary staff continue with what they're doing. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Reese. Thanks, Dr. Martha. Bye. And thank you, Martha, of course. Let's go ahead and turn around this camera, everybody, because now we are going to let them wrap up the rest of the procedure. How cool was that? It was so great to see all over 300 of you tuning in live this morning for our very first sloth exam on Z Learning. Now, we will keep you in the loop on all the updates as far as Willow's journey as she clears through quarantine and eventually heads into the Riverbanks Conservation Outpost to meet her new friend, hopefully, Coco Joe. So, we'll make sure to keep you all up to date on all of that. Thank you all so much though for tuning in live. Tomorrow morning, we are going to be heading live on Z Learning again, 10 a.m. You're not gonna wanna miss it because we have a big birthday party planned. It's a two-year-old birthday. If you've ever been to a two-year-old birthday, you know they're a blast, but it's gonna be even more special because it's for Zakoda the gorilla. So we hope to see you tomorrow morning. Thanks everybody so much for tuning in. We'll see you then.